Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. everybody welcome i want to welcome you welcome 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 to the dr pat show this is talk radio to thrive by and i gotta tell you um i am like so jazzed i'm looking at the people that we're working with people that are going to be doing shows that are starting with us to do shows and it just it gets me right in the heart when I when I get to talk with people like my very special guest today and upcoming host, Sharon Sananda Kumara. And the thing that I love about this is when you hear a show like this, Sharon and I have been working on this for a while, but we're also getting ready for something else, something bigger. Uh, today on my show, I want to introduce you to who Sharon is, but even more importantly, what is the journey? What has that been like? Because when you think about, you see people in the world, ask yourself how they get there. I mean, did they just wake up one day and there they were, phenomenal book, academy, is that really what happened? Or along the way, did you have to light a few fires, put some out, and then learn how to breathe. Well, that is the essence of what you're going to hear today. You know, so awakened soul. What you're going to hear is what happens with a near-death journey that enables you to tap into that Christ energy and beyond. What do we need to know today so that we don't have to live in fear and doubt. What happens when you trust? What does life look like? Sharon, it's great to have you. Great, great, great to see you today. Awesome. I can't oh. wait to talk about this. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Pat. It's my honor and great pleasure to be here. I can't wait either. Um, I want to start out, uh, first of all, congratulations on the book, Awakened Soul. So that's like, is that available like everywhere now or? It's available on Amazon at the, at the time right now. Yes. And uh, okay. it hasn't been out that long. So still working on getting it out there. I'm almost finished with the audible, the audio version that'll be up this month. And yeah, thank you. 10 years in the making. So it's, it's a big deal to me. <laughs> no, it is. But you see, this is really part of the journey we're going to talk about today because, you know, I, I remember, so here, interesting story, and then I want to get into right into it. I remember my first couple of years, I remember being interviewed by John Holland. I can't remember what year, but it, and I remember when John was doing his like reading thing and he was talking to me and I remember what he said to me and I just cringed. He said, you know, Pat, you're going to do really well. But in about nine years, <laughs> like what? <laughs> like, and do you know, John Holland said three things and each of them has manifested. Um, he predicted a relationship with Australia. Um, and that nine years literally was nine years from the time I talked to him to the time we launched the network. And I've often wondered, how are some people touched with this incredible insight and connection? And that's what today is about with you, because you too have been given gifts. You too have gone through an experience. But what is it that happens in a near-death experience event that accelerates that pathway? So maybe for you, 
nine years wasn't what you had to wait. <laughs> 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 but let's start at the beginning. I know we like to talk about the near-death experience, but your whole life has been a journey of, you know, just like a beautiful, just like the tapestry behind you. It has been this beautiful connection of points, this connection to Christ, this journey that allows us to step beyond the boundaries and borders of our limitless mind. What was it for you that you can remember what was some of the things, challenges that you had to overcome, Sharon, to get you right here today? What were some of those? Well, quite a few, actually. I wasn't, yeah, I was raised Catholic, but I was not religious and fell by the wayside of, of a spiritual journey up until uh, my stepfather passed in 98. And that's when things started for me. My NDE, my near death was in 2001. And uh, so I was, um, I, I didn't remember most of my childhood during my adult years, which I cover uh, that in the book as well. And also, I was just basically a party or just kind of drifting along, not really, had no spiritual center, had no, no center other than uh, working. I did keep down a job <laughs> and <laughs> and partied on the side. I figured I lived in San Antonio, Texas when all this was happening, when my awakening started. And, and, you know, I figured, okay, this is what we do here in San Antonio, Texas. We go out to clubs and during the, during those times, we go out to clubs and drink beer and, you know, dance country music. So, <laughs> so it was like, okay, that's it. But it still didn't, it wasn't a fulfilling, obviously, because I was partying quite a bit. And, and then when my stepfather passed, I realized, okay, something's, I need to know what happens. This is the first time I had lost anyone close to me. And I needed to know what happens when we actually die, because I couldn't, I, the idea that we either go to heaven or hell that I was taught didn't make any sense to me because my dad was a good man, but he, I mean, he had his faults, of course, we all do. And, um, but he he didn't pre we weren't religious we were, weren't brought up in my uh family as as um abiding by the catholic doctrine that was my grandma grandmother's deal right there so so i needed to know and i started reading about mediumship my sister gave me a book by george anderson we don't die yeah and that's opened up and i've got goosebumps just talking about it and yeah. that opened doors in me uh, that I could never have imagined. And I started having sleep paralysis episodes, spontaneous sleep paralysis episodes w that scared me. I actually thought I was dying at that point because I didn't understand what that was, where you wake up and you can't move and you're frozen. And uh, it feels like there's a presence in the room and you don't know what's going on or, <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty scary. And I started researching at that time I was researching around 2001 to, or I'm sorry, 98, 99. That's when my dad died. I was researching spiritual stuff and joined a couple forums on, um, on spirituality. Cause it wasn't real prevalent like it is now. And I came across an article that talked about out of body experiences and they called this sleep paralysis, what I was experiencing. And I, and it's sleep out-of-body experiences talked about being able to contact loved ones. That was one of the benefits of having conscious out-of-body travel. And I'm like, perfect. Okay, now I understand what's going on. I can find my dad uh -huh. with this. So it just felt natural to me. I'm like, okay, well, this is something that we all do. And I started studying every book I can get my hands on on out-of-body experiences. And I was able to, to consciously travel it took me about six weeks to be able to consciously leave my body and travel and find my dad. Mm -hmm. And then 2001 was a ca another catalyst for me where uh, I had my, um, my near death experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love in the book, um, there's a opening in your book, uh, awakened soul. And uh, if I paraphrase this and butcher it, 
but you say mm -hmm. something like awakened soul is like more than a near-death experience it really mm -hmm. and you talk about this it's really a testament to the transformative power of christ's infinite love and i want to hold on to that for a minute because this is part of the journey this is part of the conversation and you and i have so much in common you know growing up as as catholics and you know being part of that uh cultural in my in my family it was a cultural thing um but at the same time i also had people in my family like my uncle ralph who is like i don't get what's going on over here <laughs> right and he's like okay we're going to find something else right we're going to find but never took down the crosses from his house but he left the Catholic Church because he was in search of something that fit him better. And I think that was bold for him. You know, this is a yeah. guy that grew up devout and like at 85 or 82 or something was like no mas. What is it about us that we can look at, Sharon? And let's take it from your NDE right? What mm -hmm. is it about us that once we get this information allows us to make decisions for ourselves about what we believe? For example, Christ's infinite love. What right. was that for you? Because it's not very easy like to say, oh, I left this church or I left that church. But when you hear the people that have done it, I don't care what religion you're looking at, there's one in every one. It's like there's some story, right. but for you, it didn't just open a door. It literally pulled the curtain back mm -hmm. for you to become who you are today. Is that correct? Is that a correct it, analogy? Yes. Yes, it is. And um, what, after my NDE, Christ began working with me on a personal level. And we made that deal during the near-death experience <laughs> that, okay, I'll go back as long as I know that you're with me on a personal level. Because I, when I was met by him, I remembered him. And I wouldn't have remembered him here in the physical world because I had barriers of uh, not feeling worthy of God's love. Yeah. Which is what we're programmed, I've learned, is what we're programmed with. And so... So he worked with me on a very uh, intense level. I made it, I, I, and I had to hold my end of, of the bargain, of being in my room every night at 9 p.m. in meditation with him and sit with him and um, do the work that he was giving me. And I realized while working with him, and I, well, for, during my NDE, that Christ isn't about religion. Mm -hmm. He's not about following one pathway. It's all about loving ourselves and loving others and being in that space of um, realizing for also that everyone is a is a part of us. We are all one. He taught me that, helped me remember that. And also that his love, God's love, his love, um, it, it, um, it is so all encompassing that whatever we could have felt guilty about or was ashamed of is totally washed away in his who and I'm feeling that in his embrace and mm -hmm. he welcomes everyone every single person doesn't matter what you have that you feel bad about or feel guilty about he welcomes yeah. everyone that is what he helped me remember when I was in his arms during my NDE and uh that was huge for me because I, ha you know, I, we, we have our stuff. I had a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, we all do. Don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, and, you know, even though we have our stuff and you, you know, all you have to do is go through a 12 step program and do that fourth step and your stuff just shows up on paper. And it's like a real, it's like, what, what are you making me do? But what I love about your story, and I want to stay with this for a minute because the understanding that we can come into agreement, right? That we can come into agreement and we can negotiate because you and I did, you and I had negotiations here mm -hmm. with uh, Yeshua or Christ or whatever people, wh whatever folks would like to reference, right? Right. But it's interesting about our agreements because I want to talk to you about the pivot point 
And what do I mean by that is when I, I didn't have an NDE, I had what they call now, what the heck are they calling them? S S D E S something. Yeah. 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 Not to get that confused with the other S T something, but, (laughs) but those now are being recognized as well. And let's talk about what the options are now. Because you go from there and now here you are in the world today. And I want to take a moment and go to where you are in the world today. And then I want to fill in the blanks. Because here you are today. Let's talk about what you're launching, your show. Let's talk about the academy. Let's talk about how you are. I don't want the word reinventing, but it's almost like a rebirth. And I love Mm -hmm. talking about this Mm -hmm. because a light bulb went on for me, Sharon, and and I'd love for you to comment on it. Because as I was preparing for this, I thought, oh, my gosh, we're both going through this. You know, something happened to shift us on a pathway that we cannot not do. So tell us from where you sit today, what is in front of you? What are you excited about? What are you launching? Well, I'm definitely excited about my show with you. That is huge for me. Yes. That is a big deal. <laughs> and I'm definitely excited about that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, yeah, and I'm working on my second book. I'm excited about that as well. It's uh, My books are all, uh, you know, when you write a book, it's like, okay, well, you can't include everything you want to include in it. Everyone needs to write a book, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you just have to. And so... So I'm like, okay, well, now I want to write a book about what my the healing journey with my out-of-body experiences, because I do include some of that in my first book. And and he helped me with, isn't that ironic? Yeshua helped me with my out-of-body experiences and how to move into higher planes with and heal through out-of-body experiences. So I, after my NDE and, hit, and uh, working with Christ, I was awakened to my unique gifts and my abilities as... Um, helping with helping people being of service in a way that helps people remember their true self and their unique gifts and abilities because that's what I feel we're all about here just like what you know what you do and people on your platform do and so he helped me remember those and just peeling away the layers that were getting in the way of feeling worthy of who I really am of what powerful beings we really are and remembering that how powerful we really are. And so, um, so I was still working for an oil company. I was in accounting most of my career and, um, in, you know, in that area. And I was, I started a practice part time because I started helping people with my, my abilities and psychic mediumship type of stuff. And he also taught me mm-hmm. about so past life, soul retrieval, past life, uh, work, therapy work, bringing in fragmented parts of ourselves. He helped me with that. Everything that I help people with, I had to heal on my own and he helped, yeah. he helped me with that. And so uh, I started to practice and I was doing part-time for many years. And then it got so busy. I'm like, you know what? Uh, and things were happening at my corporate job that were not, that just, I did. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, if I can take this anymore, I'd go <laughs> home, you know, just depleted, depleted. And then I, you know, and I'd have, and I was working with my practice too. And then I'm like, I'm and in my head, I'm quitting. I'm quitting in my head, in my conversations with my boss. Totally get it. Yeah. Guess what happened? I got fired. So um, after yeah, 11 Totally. Years. Right. <laughs> because what we did is we called it in and we programmed it. And, you know, right. people always ask me, and what you just shared is a perfect representation of the unspoken side of law of attraction, where we are so much more powerful than we think. The Mm -hmm. idea of thinking in that situation, because I did the same thing. (laughs) I'm like, I just hate this. I don't want to be here. And then what happens? A day comes and you're at a tipping point. Gene Mm -hmm. Houston calls them tipping points. You're at a crossroads. And, you know, you may be thinking, I really like, I really need this job. I've been here a long time, but your parallel universe partner says, girlfriend, you need to be done with this job, right? Yeah. Yes. (laughs) But you, you know, let's talk about where that leads you because there are lessons, there's insights that you gain from all this, right? Mm. The healing process and how Christ guided you. And that is so important to talk about, isn't it? Yes, definitely. 
it, it is because it's a big leap in uh, in doing this doing what I do full time and I've been doing it full time since then that was in 2017 that I was fired and so it it was my my sign here you go <laughs> to 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 that uh, the universe was saying, okay, you've been asking for this. You want to do this full time. So here you go. This is your opportunity. And it took, it helped me remember and realize that to trust, to, to trust what uh, our life plans being laid out. My life plan was being laid out in front of me. And I was afraid to take that, <laughs> that <laughs> leap. Right. And, you know, everything happens in good timing, I suppose. So it meant to, it was meant to happen when it did. Um, but it helped me not just trust. I'm not trusting anything outside of myself. I'm trusting me, yeah. myself. And that part of me that, that wrote this life plan with my higher guidance, with my higher self, with my guides and all this. Um, because I wasn't meant to work for some, I wasn't meant to work for for an oil company or at that time as a manufacturing company um, for the rest of my life. That that wasn't what I was meant to do. I I knew that that kept you know that inspiration, that knowledge kept coming to me. That information. So so that I got a little shove. And my dad used to say, yeah. you know, if you don't listen to guidance sooner or later, if it, it's going to hit you over the head. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you know, that is so true. I mean, one of the things that I think we're going to be doing and you're going to be doing with your show is you're going to be providing real-time guidance for people during the show, mm -hmm. but sure. also to help people have that, I call it, you know, this little two ounces of courage that you carry yeah. around in like a little tincture bottle, Right. And every time you need a little bit of it, you take the little drop around, you give yourself a little bit as a reminder. Um, because if we look back now, let's take a look back for a minute. Uh, for those of you that are just tuning in, um, again, Awakened Soul, uh, Sharon Kumar is joining me here today, Near Death Journey, but also for you, Awakened Soul is now published. You can get it on Amazon. It's available in Kindle. I already have my Kindle version. Oh, um, and then the audio version is going to be coming soon because I love audiobooks, right? Yeah, uh, I'm assuming you're doing the audiobook, are you? I am. Yes. You're doing the recording. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's the only way to fly if you can do it. Um, but get, let's take a moment because I want people to be able to go to your website and see the depth and the breadth of what we're talking about here. What is the best way for people to find out more about you and what you're up to? Sure. My website is Sharon Sananda. I'm sorry, Sharon Sananda dot com. I tried to say so that <laughs> that's my website for my practice. And um, there's links there for my academy. I teach courses and classes and have other practitioners as well. We're building that academy out, and I'm really excited about that. Yeah, We're bringing on really amazing practitioners, and um, and they'll be teaching courses and classes and having events. We already have events that we run through the academy that the academy sponsors, and so yeah, really exciting stuff. That's yeah. KumaraAcademy.com. Right, and I want to just say, remember the site to go to is sharonsananda.com and s-a-n-a-n-d-a.com and when you go there you'll know how to schedule time how to book a session you'll see mm -hmm. all the various things that sharon is available to you to do with you whether it's a one hour remote session a 90 minute remote or in person there's so many things here everything from a hypnosis session to when we talk about house cleansing, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> but all of these things are really to help the alignment of who we are in our true nature with what we are meant to do, right? I mean, Correct. that's why we're talking about awakened soul is what the soul's got nothing better to do, or is this to help us get on point and get on track? Look, the reason I'm bringing this up is. We all go through moments where we, I had a mo I had this yesterday happen to me out of nowhere, where something hits us on a day and it's like, what am I doing? What am I doing here? Right. And you get that moment. And I tend to get those moments when my spiritual practice is low. So those moments are directly related to 
<laughs> how committed I am mm -hmm. to, to solidifying and, and, and literally harmonizing my belief in the divine. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do you think? Oh, I totally do you, do you battle with it. that. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, pretty much daily. But uh, <laughs> I think we all do at some point. It reminds me of the book by Barbara Marciniak, uh, where she brings in the Palladians. Oh, and she asked them, and I, I forget the, the name escapes me of the book, but it's the first one she did. She asked them, how long should we, how, how, how much time should we give to our spiritual practice, to our spiritual growth, to awakening our soul <laughs> during our day, right? And they answered her with 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Because the rest is distraction because that's yeah. what it's, I mean, of course we're living our life, but not, but, and the, but the spiritual practice enhances our life. It doesn't take away from it. We don't, we have time for all of it. But you know, part of this is looking back now today as we're doing with you and your journey. And I know for you, you and I have talked offline and I know after my experience, I had two experiences that triggered a few things. One was my 1997 trip to the desert and meeting my mentor, whose book is up there behind me, Sidonia Cahill, uh, meeting my mentor, that changed my life, but I, I couldn't do it all at once, I guess. And I'm going to ask you this about process. You know, I've heard stories from people. I had a near death experience. I woke up the next day. I left my family, you know, th that kind of thing. I'm a little slower. They say that's because of all my Capricorn, you know, I'm one of these late bloomers. So I get to hit 97, but I don't get the experience until right at the end of my dissertation before the show. And it's like I got that one, two punch. The first one was to see if I was even open, mm -hmm. if I was really open to believing that this other entity, this other force, Christ consciousness, spirit, whatever one believes in, was I open to that? Was I going to have an experience in the devil, in the desert that changed me? And I did. And I've, I've gone several times. But it wasn't enough. You know, it got me in a direction that helped me change the trajectory of what I was researching. Yeah. But I was still going to be on track, Sharon, to go back to corporate America until I had that experience I shared with you mm -hmm. that they don't call an NDE. It has another name, right? Because you don't go on record as being dead, but they can't explain why you didn't come back. Yeah. They're just, they, they're like, well, we don't think you were dead, but we really had to work at, you know, that kind of thing. But it took two times for me, but that second time, when I came back from the hospital, and a year of tests, I was not the same. I was not the same. Yeah. And I didn't know how not the same I was <clears throat> until I had finished my doctorate, postdoctorate, and I was sitting in front of a job offer, a very big fat paycheck job offer as a consultant, and I couldn't take it. I couldn't take the job. So I'd like you to talk about this because I want people to understand sometimes that the intervention we get is one of knowing. Yeah. And that was knowing that I could not take that job. Although, talk about this, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know my next move. How often does that happen? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah i would say probably quite often and that's where trust comes in doesn't it yeah yeah i think that sometimes we just need to uh reset and and that's hopefully what opens us up to trusting god trusting the universe trusting the christ within us and because uh, that's yeah that's been huge for me as well mm. it's okay mm. something happens and i'm like okay what do i do now i you know uh and i I do meditate on it. I trust everything's going to be all right. And people around me have said, how can you, how come you're not scrambling? You know, <laughs> how come you're not, how come you're not worried about this? I'm like, I've, 
I've learned not to worry. I know that God has my back. The universe has my back. Christ has my back. I have my back. Yeah. So, um, I'm very, I'm hugely supported. And it took a little while for me to remember that and trust that it doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but I know that everything is going to work out and everything's going to be okay. Yeah. I, I love that. I want to talk that a little bit more about that. We're going to take a short break, everybody. And when we come back, I remember the first time that Dr. Jean Houston pulled me aside. I consider Jean one of my mentors. She pulled me aside in one of her workshops and she said, you know, Pat, you can call on your quantum partner. Okay. So I'm thinking like, what, is that my ex? I, I'm telling you, I was so new to everything. The Dr. Pat you see today is not the Dr. Pat of 20 years ago. <laughs> and then she went on to explain to me what a quantum partner was, what dimension they were in. When we come back, Sharon's going to walk us through exploring those galactic connections. <laughs> what is it about those? that happen, that play a part into figuring out who we are, but more importantly, getting insight to what our next move is gonna be. Let's take a short break, everybody. Emily, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back. My very special guest today, Sharon Sananda Kumara, joining me here today. Uh, again, let's take a minute and let people know, one, how they can book time with you, how they can find out more about you, and then also the Academy, if that's available. Sure. Yes. Uh, my website, Sharon Sananda, S-H-A-R-O-N-S-A-N-A-N-D-A.com, where they can, where people can uh, go on my website, find out a little bit about me and book, book something if I, my work resonates with you. And my academy, Kumara Academy, K U M A R A A C A D E M Y dot com. And yes, uh, we have ongoing courses and classes. I have a course coming up in January for um, psychic mediumship, learning about how to use your your gifts and abilities, your unique gifts and abilities, and to pierce the veil. <laughs> you know, and I'm glad we're talking about this because this really needs leads to the next segment that of what I want to talk with you about. You know, um, when I had my confusion about my religion growing up and, you know, the, the weirdest thing happened to me to really get me sideways on Catholicism. It was the most ridiculous thing, but mm -hmm. because I didn't understand how for years you grow up and you've got to wear a hat in church and no meat on Friday. I mean, all of these things, right? And then one day, none of that is true anymore. And so as a kid, you get confused. Now, as an adult, my uncle's like, oh no, I don't even understand it. But the reason I want to talk with you about this is because so often we like to exclude things like galactic connections, like other galaxies, like other things that may seem controversial to religion. But here's the question. I want you to talk about what your experience is, because both of us have experiences with this, right? Yeah. But why can't it all be mm -hmm. under the divine? Perfect question. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pat. <laughs> I will, during my near-death experience, Christ took me to another civilization, another world, another planet. And, uh, and he also healed me and helped me heal with metaphysical type of healing modalities, <laughs> which is totally outside, you know, the religious way of looking at things. So I learned and remembered during my work after, afterwards with my work with him is that I also have other, other reality, other lives, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. other uh, lives on other planets, other, other spheres, other realms, other dimensions where my soul, a part of my soul, my oversoul is living and experiencing and enjoying life or 
or I mean, we have our challenges, of course, but he took me to a, a water world during my NDE that uh, I felt at home at more than any other place I can imagine mm -hmm. on earth. I love earth. I do. But when I was in that higher plane experience in on the water world as an aquatic human type being, I was home more mm -hmm. than I, I can't, you know, and earth is a home for me here, but it's not my true home. And a lot of people have expressed that they feel that way too. And I know that being with source is our true home, but um, in, in that space of the one, but that was a home for me that felt like no other. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so I learned about our, our multidimensional selves, our expressions are multitudes. And so who watches over the other parts of us? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I love talking about this because, you know, there are many, many people that have had experiences like this. But, you know, not everybody feels like they can talk about them. I think, mm -hmm. okay, a plug for our pop culture. I'm going to call it our pop culture because I don't know what else to call it. But, you know, one of the things that we see happen is like a number of years ago, the Congress signed a bill and said all of the UFO stuff, you need to put it out in the public. And so that shifted, you know, that changed a few things for people. And then the conversation continues. But our pop culture right now, is what's the word should I say? The amount of programming that is in our pop culture world now that expresses the galactic heritage journey mm -hmm. and what's possible is really unprecedented. Everything from shows like Silo to other shows like Three Body Problem which isn't about the body. It's really about multiple galaxies and multiple, whatever you want to call it. But a show like that comes on and we are plugged into that by the millions. What do you make of that? Yeah, I don't know those millions. shows. I love, I'll have to watch those shows. <laughs> but we are just so plugged in. We are. That Hollywood's like, why are we making any other movies, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's they they understand that we're disclosures coming. I know disclosures coming. I've been shown this, and I'm sure you have too, Doctor Pat. That yeah. it's coming. It's coming. Uh, slowly, you know, our humanity collective is uh, <laughs> slow learners, I guess. But um, we are. Uh, I'm one of them too. I'm a, a slow learner, but yeah, it's coming. I mean, I've seen and experienced so. So many experiences with uh, extraterrestrial, I don't even know what else to call them, non-Earth yeah. type beings, more than I can count for sure, that there, no one can tell me that these beings do not exist and we do not, um, you know, have experiences with them and they're on Earth now. So there's so many people talking about their experiences. Thank goodness. It took me quite a while to be able to talk about yeah. my experience. And that's why it took me so long to get the book in order. But um, yeah, it's coming. We're, we're the disclosure. We can't expect government to tell us what is out no. there and what is real. We are the disclosure. Yeah. yeah. And that has been, we have been the right. disclosure all along. I mean, mm -hmm. you can go back in time you know, way back in time, like when we first saw the first signs of writing, let's call it writing, which were really symbols in a cave, yeah. right? right? You know, we see the emphasis on this, but you mentioned something and I want to stay with it for a minute because this had to have an impact on you to write Awakened Soul, did it? What was behind your movement and motivation to write Awakened Soul? I wanted to share my experiences with people so that they who people were who were having their own experiences and didn't didn't know where how to put them in context with their life and to let them know they're not crazy. Other people are experiencing because I have had some crazy experiences and a lot of people have, but they don't talk about it. And I've got and so many messages from people saying, thank you, thank you for writing about this. Even before I wrote my book, when I would share something or talk about something, people would say, thank you for sharing that because I've had my own experiences where I've been on a water world or 
that was, you know, taken by extraterrestrials, things like that. People have been talking about that for a long time. But, um, and also people have said that as they read my experiences, they are, they feel parts of them being healed too, while they read it, because the Christ consciousness is with, Christ is with, you know, in any book you read that has a frequency, has a high frequency, you are, you are taking in that frequency within your, your frequency, yourself. So the reason I wrote it was to help people understand that this is not so Abby normal. <laughs> it's, we're moving into this kind of stuff being the norm because we used to be like this. It just, we got programmed out of us. And so we're moving back to what the norm is. And that is remembering who we really are. That, that program is dying where we don't remember who we are. And, uh, and we're afraid to, you know, to talk about what's out of the ordinary when really out of the ordinary yeah. is soon the ordinary. You know, I was driving to the office, um, yesterday, I believe it was, um, or it may have been Monday and I was driving to the office and I called Linda, Linda's on the East coast and I had something unusual happen to me. And I mean, it was happening real time. So Linda got to experience it and I'm still trying to process it. And I'm driving down the road and I drive down here, drive down the 522, whatever it is, highway out here. And I drive down and I make a right to go on a side road to go to our studio offices, right? Mm -hmm. And I I had a moment where I'm, I'm driving. So this is like a little weird. But I had a moment where time stopped and I'm talking to Linda. And I said, Linda, I think I'm lost. Okay, now you can imagine Linda, right? The, this is a route I take every day, Sharon, okay? I said, Linda, I'm lost. I just made the right turn and this road doesn't look familiar to me. Well, I hadn't made the right turn, but my consciousness made the right turn. I was five minutes in the future. Wow. I was five minutes in the future. And Linda said, well, don't you know where you are? And I said, well, I'm I'm on the, the turn we make, the right-hand turn we make on Malby Road, right up here where the Safeway is. I, I made that right turn. And she said, well, why don't you reckon? I said, I don't recognize the road. And then I realized I hadn't made that turn. I hadn't made that turn. I was about five minutes from making that turn. But mm -hmm. I was confused about where I was in the moment. Like, where am I? What, what is the road I'm on? And the turn that I was going to make. And I have never had, I haven't had an experience like that in a really long time. And it scared me a little bit because I really was confused. I mean, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. But I had this moment where the reality was in my mind, I made that right turn already. I could see the right turn. But my surroundings didn't look like the right turn. Linda's on the call with me. And Linda's like, what do you mean you don't recognize where you are? I said, I don't recognize the road I'm on now. And she's like, how do you not recognize the road you're on now? I said, well, I think I'm on the road before I make the right turn. But I swear to you, I made the right turn already. So I don't want to get everybody here a little weird about it. But that was my experience the other day. And I'm still trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's Sounds nothing like, wrong with me. I'm not on drugs. Yeah. There's none of that. Shifting realities, perhaps. It was a shift in reality. Yeah. But it felt so weird. And so it felt so real. So, it was so real to me. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like your body had to catch up with your mind because your, oh. your mind was already there and your body just hadn't caught up yet. <laughs> and I remember the feeling because I was, a, I was scared. I'm driving down yeah. this road and I'm looking and I'm not, I'm like, what, when did that get there? Because I thought I was on the other road. And That's I'm like, I, I said, Linda, I don't remember this Panera place on this road. And Linda said, you need to pull over your car. And then a couple minutes later, I'm glad she was on the phone with me. I saw the light that I make the right at. And I said, okay, I guess I didn't make the turn yet. And Linda, <laughs> Linda's like, Wow. Did you pull it, over? I didn't you, because you I saw, yeah. 
I kept the driving light. because I, I, yeah. I, something happened where I realized, mm -hmm. oh, wait a minute, I didn't make the right. I'm still processing that. That was an experience of a lifetime for somebody like me, because this is a morning routine. This yeah. is get up, da, 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 go in the car, blah, 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 da, 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 right? Mm -hmm. But let's talk about this because we have these experiences. You've had them. You're sharing them. You're talking about them in the book. See, I think if my mom who committed suicide, I think my mom didn't have an audience. I think she had these experiences all the time. And she did have an NDE, her first attempt at suicide. She, I believe she had that. I see, I have letters from her. But we have so stigmatized this. Yes. And I can tell you to this, to, 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 I could tell you looking at you, your experience and what you went through was real for you. How has it helped guide you to become who you are today? Well, it's helped me realize that there's so much more to us than this life, for one thing, and that we are moving in and out of realities. Our mind, our minds are actually the real part of us. <laughs> our bodies are the illusion. Uh, we're, co you know, the creation around us has helped me realize that we are creators. And our life is what we create. And where our mind is, is the most important thing. That being in the present moment is super important. We can plan our future, of course. But uh, Christ taught me that don't dwell on the past. Because that's what keeps us down, what keeps us heavy. And um, and so it it's helped me quite a bit with realizing and remembering my multi-dimensional self mm -hmm. and again how powerful i am and how i everything mm -hmm. around me in my world i just journaled about this this morning in my world is a reflection of what i put out in the field of my thoughts what i create whether i like it or not i'm putting that out in the field the field gives me back what i'm putting out and so yeah it's more and more every day i <laughs> realize that you know how sometimes you have all these this uh inspiration and you see everything so perfectly and then yeah a little while later like i, I thought i was on this road <laughs> i thought i was on the right road <laughs> and, and, and you know and i'm so glad i got to talk with you today because we're going to do more and more of this you know part of this is is for us to really share a journey why why is this important for me and creating a network like this is because I don't want people to go through what my mom went through. You yeah. know, I, I don't want folks in today's world to think that there's something wrong with you. You know, maybe you're getting insights and visions. And, you know, working with somebody like you, Sharon, helps people mm -hmm. to, in, in a number of ways. But one of the things, importantly, is it reassures a person that we are not alone here, that we can work with someone like you get some insight into our lives. And that insight then allows us to feel more empowered and confident so we can then take an action. Yes. Right. Yes, I will. Yes, definitely. If you don't mind, I want to share something really quick. Yeah. When I was going through my dark night of the soul, what Christ called my quickening, when I was remembering all the way back to the galactic wars, memories were coming up like crazy. I tried, I saw a counselor. It didn't work. A mainstream counselor, and I have nothing against mainstream counselors, but for me, it didn't work. Uh, and I found an intuitive counselor, a psychic medium intuitive counselor, and she was the only one that yeah. I could talk to about my experiences and understand in some way what I was going through and help me in a way that um, helped me get through them and see them from a different perspective because it was extremely tough. So I, I totally agree with what you're saying. That's the main reason I wrote the book. That's even in my acknowledgments, I think. Yeah, in the forward. I know. That's why I wanted to mention it. I want to thank yeah. you, though, for this today. Um, I did an interview with Bob Parsons a couple of months ago. He's the founder of GoDaddy. It was really quite an interview. But mm -hmm. I remember one thing in particular he said. He said a couple of nuggets that just stuck to me, really, like, you know, like some Velcro. <laughs> but the thing he said to me, it just shocked me. He said, I never worry. Now, this is the founder of GoDaddy. He said, I never worry. I don't yeah. worry about anything. So what was he really saying? He is saying that 
if you trust right worry has no room trust in the divine trust in christ consciousness trust trust that this is the world that you're meant to be in and all the dots will get connected there's nothing to worry about right True. yeah Sharon, thank you for today. I want to ask you a couple of things. Again, tell sure. people how to get a copy of your book. I'd love to know your personal message you want to leave us with here today. Oh, yes. Um, I, you can find my book on Amazon. It's Awakened Soul, My Near-Death Journey, Home to Christ's Infinite Love. It is not a religious book, <laughs> not at all. And uh, it's on Amazon right now. And I, I will, if you want a signed copy, let me know. Email me and I will send you a signed copy. Um, yes. And trust is, thank you, Dr. Pat. Trust is a huge thing. And that's one of the, one of the things that Christ taught me. And it wasn't to trust him, but to trust myself. And I, and I share an experience in my book about when he and I were together in one experience and I saw him just clear as day. And he said, uh, we were dancing a slow dance. And he said, to dance like this takes trust. And I said, well, thank you for trusting me. He said, no, the trust is you trusting me. That is, that is where it starts. And yeah. trusting him meant trusting me. Yeah. It was all together. Yeah. Yeah. So trust and I love that. And I know we're going to talk about this in other shows, but the bottom line that ha what happens with trust, let's just talk about the punchline. The punchline for trust is one, it's like you have said, and Bob has said, you don't worry. Because worry isn't about being in the present moment, and it certainly isn't about trust, right? And worry is very different than being on the pulse of what's going on in your life. Worry is, is really focusing on a future event that the stats say 70% of worry things never happen. Right. But when you trust, and you say this in your book in a number of ways, you will also be guided. You'll be guided in a way that doesn't feel like guidance. You'll just know what to do. You'll just know. Yeah. And I think that's part of what your show will be about, what you're doing, how you will help people. Um, thank you for writing the book. Thank you for saying yes to your show. Um, and uh, all of this is to carve out a new leg of your journey, isn't it? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Pat. It's been my pleasure. And I'm very excited to be on your platform. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, for those of you out there, uh, you're going to hear lots more about the show. We're going to make sure you know about it. Uh, so much more to come from Sharon. So for all of you out there, Awaken Soul, go get the book. And remember, trust. It's the thing that doesn't really require any physical strength. It requires an open heart and a belief in benevolence and your future. We'll see you next time. Thank you.